So good afternoon. My name is Ranveer. I'm with the combined company. Uh, we have visited Siri Montessori School in Lucknow about six years ago uh, with the United States Educational Foundation and the British Council. Um, I have been invited by Ms. Keita Kingdom, your president and MD, and her father and mother, and uh, I visited your school several occasions. And thank you for Ms. Chanda Kunja also for arranging a time to present to all of you. And as I mentioned, the idea is to give you a brief overview on study destinations, but more importantly, how you can quickly find, search your best fit universities for studying abroad. Trust everyone can hear me. I will uh, proceed. The idea is to introduce you to bestfituniversities.com, which is an edtech AI-driven platform where students find the universities and courses fast in a single platform where you can upload your documents, get feedback, offers letters from us, the combined company, we as the authorized representative and we coordinate directly with the universities, guide you for your visas so that you can join the university and we also guide you for the education loans. In terms of background, as I just mentioned, uh, we have been operating for over 20 years. We guide students pan-India and we guide students for both undergraduate foundation associate bachelor's and master's degrees. Now, most, most of you would be in the uh, currently studying in grade 10, 11 or 12, looking for next year's admissions. So this is the right time to uh, for you to consider your uh, university that you want to apply to and the courses that you're considering with ID for your visas and student loans for studying abroad, whether it's three years or four years, co collateral free loans, co-signer free loans, and the standard collateral and co-signer loans guide you for accommodation and fx remittances uh, i'm one of the directors my name is ranveer and i'm a uh, alumni of imperial college london i also uh, sit on the board of imperial college india foundation where we got guide students to study at imperial i am also alumni of new york university and wharton university of pennsylvania newcastle university so we have uh, my peers are from the lsc um, and university of reading and uh, we have been guiding students pan India. We have built an ed, ed tech platform, as I mentioned. Uh, we have data mined uh, courses, 100,000 courses, over 500 plus universities where you can match and find your universities. This is the focus of today's discussion. Just broadly speaking, um, we have guided students to most universities, Ivy League, Russell League, across uh, key nations of the United States, US, UK, Ireland, Germany, Canada, Singapore, and selectively in other countries, Hong Kong, uh, Sweden, Italy, uh, France, etc. Uh, so we have a good track record uh, amongst uh, placements and guiding students to these top leading universities. Broadly today, um, the format is uh, for, for me to give you a brief overview of what is a best fit universities and how you can perhaps use our portal to search, shortlist, apply, explore financial aid, and join your hopefully a dream or an aspirational university and give you a background or a brief overview of the study destinations. I encourage you to uh, watch the presentation. If you have any queries, please put it in the chat uh, and we can take uh, the Q&A after that. I have a few of my colleagues who are also here online and we can uh, have a chat uh, Q&A and maybe even a live session. Uh, where you can raise your hands. So the idea is to be uh, have an interactive session. So you just bear with me. But what is effectively, you know, the process of what you're doing and plan to do, depending on whether you're in class 10, 11, or 12, looking to study next year. As some of you may be parents, some of you are students, and what is the process that you follow? You may be starting from an online search in this quarter, top quadrant here where you say I'm perhaps looking for a bachelor's in law or, or a bachelor's in computer science and data science, depending on which portal you use, you maybe watch an ad on Instagram, uh, maybe Google, you watch a YouTube video, you know, you generate some interest. You say, okay, so let me check out perhaps, uh, you know, University of Brock, Brock University of Canada or Imperial College London um, or University College Dublin in Ireland. And then you perhaps go to the university website and you start exploring sometimes very complex websites, perhaps not uh, very user-friendly, trying to discover areas of studies, then trying to look up what is your course of study, 
what tuition fee is it for international students what is the kind of university it is how many students study there what is the student faculty ratio uh, what is the ranking not just university ranking but world ranking is the times higher is it qs uh, us news etc i'm interested perhaps in, in data science uh, what is the kind of alumni profiles that students have gone on to work what kind of companies what kind of a careers assistance do we provide so highly uh, you know very search intensive time incentive as some of your counselors or even your you know peers may have told you start a year in advance start two years in advance uh, it's a time consuming process so with that for further va further validation uh, of uh, sorry, i should go back one one session just a minute uh, with further information that you get a, get from university website, you want to validate that. Now, sometimes you want to validate it by, you know, contacting the universities directly by email, sometimes calls, attend sometimes in-person fairs. Uh, sometimes universities visit you from time to time. I'm sure it's the city Montessori school. You get a lot of universities and colleges uh, which visit you. You try and interact with your school counselors, with maybe counselors from the universities. Uh, to validate. So it's information validation, right? And then you try and see what other students are talking about having studied at the university. So there's student blogs, you know, Unibuddy, uh, student rooms, you name it. In the, you know, the hundreds of blogs, okay, some of it is not validated. Some of, some of it is, is basically people writing about what are the experiences. Um, then you go to other, you, you know, websites such as uh, perhaps US News, QS, Times Higher, uh, hot courses or the like, and just trying to validate. So it's a overall a time consuming, tedious process of spending weeks, if not months, you know, trying to look up universities information, going to the sites, validating that, seeing what other students have to say. Our idea is to try and simplify that process to give you a much faster process of doing stuff. And I'll just take a minute uh, to play this video which will perhaps uh, give you a snapshot of uh, what it is all about. If I can minimize my screen, that would be useful. Let me just uh, do that right now. We flew over the cloud. It So let me just skip the Google ad and go straight to the. So I hope you can all see that. If you have any questions, just please. Uh, I'll just share the computer sound. So you can watch the video. It's it's a bit simplistic video, but the idea is, is, is to try and explain in a very brief, uh, short format of 30 seconds, 40 seconds to what it's all about. So, you know, the uh, basic idea is to give you a, a, a brief uh, idea of what it's all about. And that's really trying to address the pain points that students, parents, and counselors have, uh, which we are trying to address by using Best Fit University website. Yeah. So effectively, what is it that, you know, that we are doing? Uh, you know what you want. You perhaps don't know as much what universities want. We as uh, counselors and working with universities directly for the last 15 plus 20 years, we understand how universities evaluate you. Perhaps you don't know that as well. The idea is to assist you in shortlisting universities. So on our website, on our portal, this is the student criteria that you enter. You enter your school board, for example, ISC, ICSC, or uh, GCSE, or uh, the IB board. 
that you're studying or the NOS or similar, you enter your marks. So this is your student criteria. Student criteria is your criteria, which is unique to you, for which you want to shortlist and evaluate universities. You enter, or maybe you don't want to enter your target country, you're simply open to countries that you want to consider. You want to consider the type of institution, you want to go to public universities or private universities. Again, not all criteria need to be entered. The more criteria you enter, the, the better the shortlists you get. What is the degree type? Are you looking for an associate or a diploma or a full year honors bachelor's degree? So one year, two years, three years, sometimes four years, sometimes even five years, depending on if you want to do an MNG with an integrated work placement. So that's study for four years, one year, um, and graduate with a master's or a four years where you study for two years, you go and, and get a one year internship and you're back in the university for the fourth year. So a, a lot of flexibility in, involved. The size of institution, it sometimes makes a difference if you want to consider student faculty ratios. I know some students uh, prefer larger public universities. Uh, they want to be in a larger environment. Some people prefer smaller class sizes, depending upon you know their background and the kind of learning experiences that they've had. Um, size of institution matters, whether you're looking for financial aid. Most universities offer that, perhaps some more than others. Uh, Depending upon your requirements, uh, work placement or co-ops, which are popularly, uh, you know, as they mentioned in, in, in the US and uh, in Canada, or internships, sandwich courses in the UK. Some people, uh, especially for, uh, I would say, practitioner-oriented programs such as engineering, data science, law, perhaps are looking for uh, courses with the kind of uh, work internships that, uh, you know, really enhance the student experience. Campus setting is sometimes important uh, or not important. You may be only wanting to study in large cities. Um, for example, you may be wanting to study um, in London or in Dublin, and you're not too concerned whether you're in an urban setting or in a semi-urban setting. So you, mean you don't mind being in Rhode Island, for example, or you want to be in New York City. Uh, you don't mind being in St. Andrews, which is an urban, semi-urban setting, uh, equally a good university, or you wish to study in Stratlight or Newcastle or Edinburgh, which is a city. So campus setting. So Post-study work availability is a key criteria which a lot of students, especially who are looking for PR-friendly uh, countries and immigration possibilities, some are more friendly there than others. Uh, most countries are coming on par, but uh, that's certainly a criteria. So this is your criteria on the left-hand side, uh, which is what you are looking for. What you do not know directly from the websites uh, is how universities evaluate you, right? So you are evaluating universities based on this criteria. Universities are simultaneously evaluating you on similar criteria. They are looking at what kind of school, college, institution did you study at? Did you do an IB, an ICSE, uh, a GCSE, or an NIOS? They are going to evaluate you based on that. What kind of degree type did you study? Again, so similarly, the kind of board that you studied, how many years did you study? Sometimes you do a 10 plus 3. Do you do a 10 years plus, plus a three-year diploma, or did you do a 10 year uh, and uh, plus two, which is a class 12? What school board was it? Again, depending upon which school board you studied, what is mentioned on the websites are typically the entry cutoffs. That means what is the, the minimum cutoff that they would consider in order for you to be considered for the course? So if university says, for example, your minimum cutoff is 85%, that does not mean a guarantee of admission. Right, so these are the minimum cutoffs. What is implied and not always apparent is what is the offer rates based on the cutoffs that students get and what are the admission rates based on the offers that they provide. And that can vary significantly, which is sometimes why you find uh, Ivy Leagues, you know, depending upon whether 6% going to 12% uh, and many public universities going from 10% to 25% offer rates to admission rates. That means one out of four candidates get it or, or one out of 20 candidates get admissions. Admission cycles sometimes matter. As you know, the cycles start typically in October and end in January for the US, similarly for Canada. UK typically goes from uh, typically from mid-October till about early January and then till about uh, mid-July. Prior admissions data is often, often considered by the university based, for example, if you're from CMS, students from CMS have been offered university admissions to certain universities, that admissions data is, is considered by the university. So all of this is evaluated based on the profile that you do and based on our 
expertise of working with universities and matching them. We try and give you a best fit match. A five-star match is typically considered as a match university where you have a good chance of admission. So five out of five, it's a five-star rank. A four-star rank is typically based on an aspirational university where, for example, if the cutoff is 90% and your predicted reactor grade is an 88%, that means you're on the borderline. It's an aspirational university, kind of a reach college. You yeah. could reach it. You could aspire to get into it. And anything between a three and a two-star is considered typically a target university where you have a good, safe chance, maybe not necessarily 100%, but a good safe chance of getting admission. And I think that's basically what admissions is all about, right? You want to apply to maybe eight, 10, 12 universities and perhaps get offers for at least four or five so that uh, it, 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 it's a productive exercise over a six month, 12 months period. Um, so I'll move on to the next. If uh, Zoom allows me to do so, great. So the idea is for me to actually show you a live example of how things work and let me just click on that take you to the site right so this is something which uh, i have uh, populated based on certain criteria let me just show that to you so on the left side we have you know your eligibility which is what i mentioned to you in 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 terms of I hope everyone can see the slides. I have some queries which are coming up saying that you can't, so you can just put it in the chat in case you can't. Uh, but that was about 20 minutes ago. So I trust everyone can see and hear me. So the left is basically your criteria, right? Which is in my earlier slide. What are criteria that are unique to you and what are you considering and evaluating universities based on, right? So in your cases, most of you would be in grade 10, 11, or 12. So this is based on your either actual or predicted grades. So in most cases, you would say, okay, I'm going to be graduating in class 12, and perhaps based on whichever board, I know CMS largely is an ISC Indian school certificate, but applies to across whether it's ICSC, CBSC, state, IB diploma, A levels, and other like NIOS or others, right? So it can be equally used. Uh, this is your actual or predicted grade. So you feel perhaps confident about an overall grade. So it's not best of three or best of five. This is your overall grade for all subjects, right? So you feel perhaps I'm going to get an 87. We're not differentiating, but you know whether it's a science or a commerce is yet. We're just working on aggregates, right? And perhaps depending upon whatever criteria you have in terms of what you want to evaluate either by country, if you're country agnostic, that's perfectly fine. I've just taken, for example, that I'm interested in law. There are over 20 criteria you, you can choose from, depending upon, this is area of study, not course of study, area of study. So under law, perhaps as a class 12 student, you want to study law. You're not too concerned about which intake, there are multiple intakes. Um, let's just leave the intake inside. Um, and if you wish, you can always, keep on you know, shortlisting based on type of university, availability of scholarships, et cetera, et cetera. So let's not get too complicated. The over 20 criteria, by the way, um, which allows you to shortlist and get your best fit rankings. So based on your class 12 ISC board predicted or actual of 87%, for example, your bachelor's courses recommended on a best fit score out of five, these are your recommended universities. So in no particular order, the idea is just to see out of scale of five, which are the ones which are most recommended. So these are effectively anything between three and less are your safe universities where you have a reasonably good chance of admission. So Royal Holloway University of London, Brunel, Burbeck, uh, Kings, based on a four-star ranking will be an aspirational choice. Why is that? Because the King's cutoff is 90%. So they will not consider you less than and 90%, in your case, you're put on 87%, for example. So that's why it's an aspirational choice, right? So you know that perhaps if I do get an 88 or a 90 or a 91, I would be considered for admission. No guarantee of admission, but perhaps you would have a chance. So Southampton, for example, is would be a best fit match, five out of five. So you have, I would say, 
it's a match university where you have a reasonably good chance of admission. That's why it's a five star rank, and so on and so forth. So you know you can go country wise. Is most of them are coming in the UK. You can go Canada, and now you've already gone into US, Canada, and the more you just create a. It's a free. It's a free service. You can log in, create an account, and you keep on looking, and seeing whatever is it that you want to do, and you can shortlist the universities. So you just looked at, for example, just the area of study. So you just looked at the university per se. So you say, okay, I want to add this shortlist university, you save it, but perhaps you want to evaluate it further and you want to actually go into the university. And this is what the information that we just talked about, right? So this is a one, one snapshot of what the university is. It provides scholarships, size of the institution, approximately 28,000 students, faculty, student ratio, one to 12. So one faculty for a year be 12 students, which is fairly decent. Most universities are like that. Average tuition fee in the home country of use is approximately 21,000 to 50,000. 50,000 would be for the medicine courses. So it's an average range, right? It's ideas just to see or as a thumb rule, uh, what is it that uh, it, it, it actually looks like, right? It's a public university. It's a campus is in a city, which is in the city of London, uh, world ranked. So world ranked is typically uh, the Times higher and the QS ranking and whether the current competition is available. There's a lot of information which is here, which you perhaps can read. All of this is coming from the university website. It's not third party information. It's telling you what is the admissions deadline. So it's telling you UG is typically third week or middle of January and um, admissions for masters, not so much applicable uh, to you guys would be in January, uh, sorry, in mid July. Videos officially from the universities are here. And again, the idea is for you know, not to go and search YouTubes and things like that. You just want to see. Uh, let me have a look at what Kings is about. Again, the, you know, this information is directly from the university. It's not third party. It's all taken from the university, assimilated across multiple websites, official channels of YouTube and others, and put in our best fit university website. Since it was law, which was the shortlist, this is showing you the specific law programs. So you could be perhaps be interested in politics, philosophy, and law. Uh, these are all the various standard and combinations, law, LLB. It would, you can start an application, you can upload your documents uh, and uh, give your all standard CV supporting LORs, uh, essays, uh, 10, 12th, 11th predicted scores here. You'll have get some specific information. It's a four year degree, entry requirements, A star, AA. So we match that based on the percentages that you put it. Approximate tuition fee, 26,000 pounds, start an application. You can do that at the click of a button. And I say start the application, it means supporting your documents, giving us supporting documents to start the application. We would actually do the application on the portal of the university and give you the feedback and the offer letters. Again, you don't have to go to the university and spend hours looking at what are the kind of scholarships that you want. It's all here. It's, it's summarizing information based on 
in your case, internal scholarships for studies. Just a minute. Call. So international scholarships going from 2,000 pounds upwards, um, depending on your areas of study, um, global affairs, etc. And there are department scholarships. All the links are here. We wish you can go through and search further. Various external scholarships which are available based on your whether it's bachelor's or a master's course. Um, all of them are summarized here. Um, and some certain descriptions are given here in terms of Chevening, Commonwealth, in Lax. Right. So this is again authentic information assimilated, uh, web crawled across KCL and other websites from authentic sources. And this is the ranking officially. Even to, if you go to the rank, sorry, if you go to the website of KCL, you'll see this as per QS 2022-23. QS rank is uh, 35, and so is the THE Times Higher Education rank. You want to learn about uh, careers alumni in terms of how st students are assisted. Most of the information is summarized here. Uh, it tells you what kind of support is provided by the university. The links are here. If you want to go, th go through it, all the information is here. Um, more, and perhaps most importantly, what is the kind of post-study work environment uh, that uh, you wish to uh, evaluate? So in particular, for the things, this is a, a UK university. Uh, all the in all the relevant information is here, and you know you can obviously reach out to us uh, by giving us further information. Should you a call back or simply make an inquiry, um, and so on and so forth. So that's basically on how to use the website. You can also navigate, maybe perhaps not. Uh, you know, you want to just explore and want to search by country. You want to search and just say, you know, what what are the USPs of studying. Uh, in any particular country, for example, um, let's just take USA, for example. Right, so it's giving you a snapshot of the countries in terms of what are the key USPs uh, of actually studying in, in, in the US, for example, the list of approximately 100 plus universities that way we can guide you. Um, you know, for example, in University of Arizona, you click on it, it'll take you to the relevant uh, website, start the same process. Right? So very user-friendly, very uh, all in a single portal. The more you view, the more information you know you can get. Uh, it tells you how the system works. Um, that happens to even myself. And want to book a you know a session for um, sort of uh, profile building or applications for the next one or two years. You can easily set up a time uh, by doing that here. You can search by country. You can search by study areas over. 15, 16 study areas, you can search by degree, in most cases, bachelors for yourselves, uh, and a lot of success stories about uh, like financial aid and loans which are available, um, which you can uh, do. Student loans are very popular. We work with most uh, private and, and public banks, um, in, in, in including, uh, I would say, Prodigy, which provides student, uh, I would say, co-signer and collateral free loans, and then Access and HDFC Credula and NBFCs and also various country-specific scholarships such as I would say the Ireland and the Great UK scholarships are also available. So you can search and, and it's all relatively uh, transparent. Uh, you can use the resources and look at success stories and the various things that we have uh, guided students on. I'm a little wary of the time if I just keep on talking. So I'm gonna jump into the next uh, Point. The idea was to show you how to use the website. Um, just broadly speaking, since uh, the session is on study abroad, the idea is to give you a brief snapshot. I know there are more countries, but perhaps the most popular countries being US, Ireland, Canada, US, uh, sorry, UK. Um, in your case, most of you would be considering a UG or maybe a four year or a five year MNG or a MS or a MA program, which is an integrated program. So, key comparison is three to four years. Uh, in Ireland, most part would be three years. U.S. for the honors or a bachelor's degree, unless you're doing a diploma or associate, uh, would be four years. And Canada, again, similarly, minimum three to four years for a full year, a full bachelor's program. The average cost um, is given in the in the country specific currency of say twelve lakhs to about twenty five lakhs. I'm not going to convert, but uh, fifteen thousand euros to about twenty five thousand euros. 
living cost by and large is almost the same between 8 lakhs to up on the upper end about 12 to 12 lakhs depending upon um, you know where you're staying us can be going up to a little bit more than that if you're especially in staying in states such as california and and, and new york state most of them uh, provide uh, part time study work and in terms of uh, co-op or ability to work part-time is 20 hours a week. Uh, some are restrictive as to whether you can do on or off campus. Uh, US is typically on campus. Similarly, Canada, Ireland, and UK, you will be able to work off campus. Post-study work is uh, often referred to as the ability for graduate students to work uh, after graduation, having finished an accredited bona fide degree, so most universities uh, in these countries provide, I would say, a minimum of two years going up to three years in Canada. Um, it's about three years in the U.S. if you do a STEM program. So science, technology, engineering, uh, math. Otherwise, in most cases, it's two years in U.K. and Ireland and also allows you to switch to professional employment, which is the same for the H1 in the U.S. Standardized tests are uh, only typically depending upon the kind of programs that you want to do, especially if you want to do, I would say, law and medicine. These are the ones which pop up, UKCAT, BMAT, MCAT in the US. Um, again, um, for the undergrad, it will be the SAT uh, or the ACT equivalent, sometimes the TOEFL or the IELTS equivalent. Backlogs is important because, uh, especially in cases such as Australia, which are not mentioned here, um, would be more strict on the backlog because of the GT um, in requirements which are more tight and uh, Canada specifically would along with the UK and US typically no more than five backlogs. Funding for from a visa point of view is something which most would exactly consider would be uh, a combination. I would say the differentiating factor would be uh, UK would require parents and, and self whereas other countries would allow you to uh, allow funding from friends and family too. Well, not so much friends, I would say more immediate family and parents. Just a quick brush uh, before we get on to q and is just to give you a quick country snapshot. United Kingdom holding a um, large number of popular programs, world ranked universities, up to 10% scholarships in most cases, going up to 50%, offering work placements, and a two-year post-study work visa. Um, master's courses, depending on whether you're applying for an MNG, could be useful, perhaps not so much for, for you for a, for a bachelor's program. Uh, there are a lot of scholarships which I mentioned. Again, I think the idea is just to give you a snapshot. Uh, they are, I would say, university-specific scholarships. Uh, and on the top end, there would be uh, more sort of uh, external scholarships from the government. Ireland, a very preferred popular destination to Europe, um, having almost good 15 plus uh, highly ranked institutions, uh, often seen as a gateway for IT pharma, med tech, especially data science uh, and business with most of European headquarters in Dublin and uh, offering two years uh, post-study work visa. Again, similarly, without getting into too much detail, they are government of Ireland scholarships and then their university specific scholarships uh, row eight, which I've mentioned uh, here. Quick snapshot, Canada, which is uh, an offered considered as, as, as a safe nation to study, offering a similar quality of uh, university accommodation and quality of uh, education as compared to the US. A lot of options available for co-op and community colleges. Similarly, most of, I would say, the scholarships available for Canada would be specific to the universities, less so much from the government. Just very briefly, US, we can spend you know a couple of hours just talking about the US, but ideas again, just to give you a snapshot, very widely flexible, high quality, international acceptability, OPT, up to three years, STEM programs, scholarships based on uh, the CSS for international students, FAFSA, not so much for international students, but CSS based on your idea returns of your parents who are going to show funding to you, which forms a basis of some of your applications for financial aid. Um, again, quick snapshot, external scholarship. Mm -hmm. 
based on your CSS particular profile, whether it's need aware uh, or totally need blind, not so much, but totally need aware. That's pretty much uh, what I had to say. I'll uh, encourage all of you to perhaps open it up to Q&A and I will uh, take some questions, perhaps uh, encourage you to put it in the chat and um, perhaps start uh, and with Akshara. What about full ride scholarships? Perhaps you can just clarify, Aksha, full. Are you talking about full bright, full bright scholarships, uh, as opposed to full ride? So those are the ones which are typically uh, for highly meritorious students wanting to study in the U.S. Again, um, based on the kind of uh, institution that you're targeting, you need to meet the academic and the timeline requirements. Uh, I would need to see your profile. You need to work at least a year in advance. Um, and as I said, you're in the top 5% of a class with, a, with um, a, a very good academic and professional background. I'm just going to answer that here. If you wish to uh, take the, the Q&A live, please raise your hand. I'm going to just answer the questions first. Ayushman Patak inquiring, let me just... Uh, Perhaps uh, see the participants to Ashman Patil. Does every university offer one callback session? Perhaps uh, if you want to come online, Ashman, maybe use easier if you can explain what is it specifically, what is a callback session that you're referring to? You can talk. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. So this is Hi. Ashman Patil from yeah. CMS Mahanagar campus, sir. Wonderful. Sir, I was asking that uh, in the website you were showing that there were one, like we have to fill the details and we have to submit and then there will be a callback session from the representative of the specific university, right? Right. So we are the representative. So you will get a callback from ourselves in the first instance okay. to, validate, to validate your profile and then uh, take it forward based on whatever university that you wish to. And we have various sessions and webinars online, offline with university that we can range at a later stage. So... That's what you were referring, was it? Callback session? Uh, yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Right. Thank you so no, much. No, no, absolutely. So I encourage you to get online. Uh, I would say register. You know, uh, it's a free website, Best Fit Universities. You can search, shortlist, and we'll be able to see what is the kind of universities and the process that you've used in order to evaluate your your universities and courses. We'll be able to pick it up. Uh, and obviously send us your email, your, your CV directly, or just upload it on the website. On Bestford University, we'll be able to see it everything uh, from our database. Okay, sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll just take that as answered. Mohammed Yusuf, great if you elaborate a little bit about financial aid for US and requires a send number, which we the international students don't have access to. Yeah, so again, a great question, Yusuf. Let me get you online if I can find you. Um, a fairly large number of people. Um, yeah. If you wish, wish, you can come online uh, and unmute it yourself. Uh, if you wish to, you can do that. But otherwise, just to cut a long story short, the idea is, uh, uh, you know, financial aid is, is, is a big, uh, uh, I would say, uh, a black box in some ways, uh, especially for the U.S., uh, as international students, uh, you are competing with in-state students and home students. So in-state, for example, Texas, you would be competing with students who are given preference from the state of Texas, for example. You want to go to UT Austin, for example. And you would be competing with students who are United States uh, green card and US citizens. So in some ways, you're limiting your ability to get financial aid and perhaps admission in the first instance because they would be looking for students who perhaps would be able to fund their way as opposed to asking for funds in order to get admission. So it's a bit of a, uh, I would say, a strategic game that your profile uh, and the kind of universities that you are a best fit for. So for example, an aspirational university, I would be a little wary of uh, asking for too much financial aid. Whereas if it's a good match university, for example, or a safe, I would perhaps ask for some financial aid. Right, so it depends on your particular profile. 
Uh, SSN number, yes, those are only social security numbers for the US residents. You don't need to have that. Uh, FAFSA uh, is only for, I would say, the federal aid for US citizens or green card holders. So you would, in your instance, need the CSS, college specific uh, scholarship profile. And, and based on the ITR uh, effectively of your parents and the kind of income and expenses they have, and the kind of financial aid that the student would be perhaps eligible for, for the college and the area of study and the course of study, the university would make you an offer for financial aid. So it's a quite a tedious process. Each university requires a CSS, uh, each requires a separate application. So I'll take that as live and of course, in, encourage you to email us your documents or just register on the website and send us your query. So we got Shreya Rai, I'll, as I go through it, I'll encourage uh, all of you just just come online live also. Will it be a disadvantage or a risk to the ACT rather than the SAT? According to US in the, sorry, according to UNIS, US in Canada. So um, Shreya, if you wish, you can come online. Um, so let's be clear, um, the universities are, I would say, agnostic to the tests and the standardized tests that you need to do. Some of them may not even encourage it or they would say uh, that you do not need to do it. But if some universities are on your aspirational list, as for example, the top 30 or the top 40 Ivy Leagues or the Russell Leagues in the US and uh, UK and Canada, they would be requiring you to take the ACTs or the SATs depending upon the kind of area of study and the course that you're looking for. ACTs are slightly more science oriented as opposed to the SAT. And now we're moving to the digital SAT. So the, there's an equivalency, by the way, between the SAT. So a, a, a SAT 1490, 1500 would be an equivalent of a ACT 3435, right? So that's the kind of uh, equivalency so, and that's would be stated if you're, for example, I don't know what your area of study is, but say if your SAT requirement was a, a 1450, uh, the university would say your ACT perhaps equivalent would would be a 3334, right? So you're not at a particular disadvantage of taking one versus the other. I think they would look at your academic profile, your ninth, 10th, 11th, your predicted grade, and they would see the kind of trajectory, right? I, I think the idea would be a slightly trajectory going up as opposed to dipping down. And if it's a dip, they would perhaps, uh, you know, be a little concerned as to why that is the case. They would perhaps consider some of the APs that you've done, which are relevant to the particular program. And obviously look at your, you know, your profile in terms of uh, perhaps uh, uh, kind of ex extracurriculars, any work internships. Uh, the, most US Canadian aspiration universities ask for 10. So that's 10. Uh, boxes you need to fill up in terms of your CV and your profile, in terms of what internships, what projects, what, what extracurriculars, what honors and achievements have you got, right? So it's a holistic profile. ACT versus SATs is not going to be a particular disadvantage either way. So I'll take that as answered live. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, by, by all means, do get in touch and send us your documents if you're looking for in the next one or two years because you need to work your profile for the US universities. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you. Hi, I think she's looking for biotechnology, which she mentioned in the form. So if you're looking for that, then please be in touch here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So do, do get in touch here if you're looking for biotech next year. Um, again, some of the genetics, but you know, biotech courses are highly competitive. Um, depending upon which country, as you mentioned, US or, or Canada, some some of them would be requiring you to uh, uh, certainly take relevant class 12 and 11 uh, PCMB kind of combination where you've done maths and bio, or certainly maths, uh, physics, or totally one science with a math. So it's either physics or bio, depending upon your, or what is your target area of study. Okay, so thank you. Muted myself. Nupur, if you wish, you can come online. So the deadlines for students uh, varies 
just broadly speaking, depending on which country you're applying to, uh, US deadlines uh, typically, well, they open in uh, mid-September, 1st Jan is the deadline for regular decision, early decisions in mid-November. Uh, Canada, similarly by mid-Jan. UK, typically by mid-Jan for the sessions starting in September of the same year. O unless it's Oxford, Cambridge uh, or a medical course, you need to apply October mid for the following year. So I'll, that's broadly speaking the deadline for students and take that as answer. Like, again, feel free to raise your head, you know, your hand and perhaps make it more interactive as you seem appropriate. Uh, so the tool in our basically equivalent Srinivas inquiring whether the uh, tool includes SAT and APs. So we have mapped, matched and mapped I, I would say your grades, whether it's based on your boards. So explicitly, no, but implicitly, yes. So the ideas for your, I would say, your unweighted GPA, uh, if you understand that concept, to be considered, to be mapped to the entry requirements of the university. So typically, as you know, the holistic admissions would be your SAT or your ACT, the number of APs, whether it's an honors or a three or a four or a five, your ninth, 10th, 11th, predicted 12th. So there's no way you can, you know, we got already like six six calls. So the idea is, is what you've tried to do is map that based on a unweighted GPA or a percentage based out of 10 or 100, which is why in our tool we have the scale to equate that. Effectively, that's what we've done and we've equated it across the boards or whether it's ISC, ICAC, and IB, which is the point base, or the GSAC is ABCD, if you, if, as I'm sure you're aware of that, I would take that answered live. Uh, Tanish Sharma inquiring deadline 15th October. What can be done if you're not able to get IELTS score by then? So I presume, Tanish, let me just find you. I wish you can come online. Um, and unmute yourself. So I presume you're looking for medicine, which is the 15th October deadline for the following year. Uh, IELTS is not a requirement for the UCAS submission. Um, it is university specific. So you do not have to submit the IELTS score by 15th October. You can submit that later. It's typically a requirement nearer uh, the time of visa. And if the university based on your board, if you're at an AP board, for example, or you're done a GCSC or IB, depending upon what marks you got in ICSC or IC in English and overall would be a requirement. So it's university specific. So it's a simple answer. IELTS not required by mid-October at the time for medical school applications. I'll take that live answered. Just been inquiring for school for fashion. Tanish was looking for computer science, so oh. there's no deadline for that. Okay, so there's no. Tanish, if you can come online, you can ask your query. You mentioned computer science. Uh, yes, ma'am. I am opting, uh, means selecting computer science as uh, my. So are you, are you opting for a particular university and you know the deadline is 15? I am uh, like Oxford University uh, and the uh, King's okay. uh, College London in UK University. I think that uh, it will be our best choice for me. So I'm off right. going right. to apply. So 15th October is the deadline for either applying to Oxford or Cambridge. You can't do either. Yes. So that is the 15th October deadline. IELTS is not a requirement for the submission at the time. King's uh, uh, is okay. deadline is Jan 25th. So Jan 25th. Sir, can you all... Can you also explain the scholarship process uh, of uh, UK universities uh, in more detail, like uh, uh, the how can we achieve that? Uh, for, the best under, for an undergrad application? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So again, uh, you know, it's university specific and it's the assistance provided by the government, right? So it's the great UK scholarships which are given between, uh, I would say, the, uh, the UK's British council and uh, the uh, specifically the UK university it varies anything between 12 but I would say on average uh, two lakhs to about five lakhs sometimes going up to 10 lakhs 
that that's a broad brush. Each university would be slightly specific. And it depends on obviously, it, it's not uh, need based, it's only merit based, right? So they won't ask you for income tax or any other uh, financial documents. It'll be based on your academic profile. I don't know if anyone wants. Okay, sir. Thank you. You can be in touch with us, Tanishka, and uh, we can discuss in detail according to your profile, according to your uh, particular uh, marks and the university you are looking for. We can give you more details on scholarships. And that can sure, be a specific, uh, uh, you know, session with you. That's not a problem. Okay, okay ma'am. Thank you. Sorry, muted myself. Um, just going through universities um, for fashion school. So fashion is a great uh, undergraduate degree. Yes, uh, Jacqueline, again, I'll try and if you wish to come online, you can do so. Um, the large number of universities, uh, you've not been too specific, uh, but yes, uh, both US, uh, Canada, UK, Ireland offer fashion as an undergraduate degree, either in the, in the creative side or in the fashion management or fashion marketing side. Um, so both are available. Um, I'll take that as answered live. Do co-curricular certificates have any weightage with Uh So, so Rithvik, so the, the, it does affect, uh, I would say, your profile. But since you're going for an academic program, your main emphasis would be on your academics uh, and and anything else in terms of work internships and otherwise. We, we weighted would be unless you're a state or a national player. So, for example, I was just, I've assisted um, uh, national basketball players, for example, um, and and tennis players and golf players. So they have been given scholarship to Oxford and Cambridge. Right and and you know perhaps going to Purdue and UC Berkeley, so it does matter, but it depends on your level of competency. I'll just take take that as answer. Joanna, question on APs. I encourage you to instance this is a very broad question. Subjects involved, you know, there are almost forty APs. Some of them are more tougher than others. I would encourage you to perhaps uh, look at the AP College Board site register and go through them uh, based on your target major uh, or your target subject you would have to choose APs which would help you build your holistic profile um, but yes it does help if you can do three to five minimum APs some people go even to seven to twelve uh, it really depends on the kind of subjects most of them would would will do anything if you're in social sciences uh, you would do I, I, either a subject or a language um, like history, geography, or any other language combinations. If you are a science or a business or a math student, you will typically do, any, do anything between, uh, I would say, a physics, uh, a stats, uh, physics, mechanics, um, probability, um, econ, and similar programs. So I'll take that as answered live. So, Akshara. Wonderful. You've got great marks. 98% ICSC, CMS, Aliganj. I have a profile, well-maintained prizes and awards. Wonderful. Will I be able to get a full ride? Okay, <laughs> full bright. It's it's F-U-L-B-R-I-G-H-T, um, not full ride. Though you get a full ride because it's free, but ultimately it's a full bright scholarship. Um, again, highly competitive. I will encourage you to uh, get in touch with us. Uh, Ivy Leagues, uh, the only about 10 or 12 which are really uh, you know, need blind and the Fulbright scholarship, you would need to be an outstanding student in the top 1%, 2% of your class, um, need to apply one year in advance. Uh, certainly, you know, you got the profile uh, at the bare minimum, they would look at what your grades are between grade 9 to say 12. What are the other APs that you've done? What are the other extracurricular achievements, NGO works, internships, etc. that you've done? And what is the motivation? What is your course that you wish to study? Some would be preferred more than others. So broadly speaking, yes, you can apply. The answer with mission depends on your profile. Okay, that is answered. Um, I'm not sure if you want to, Akshar, or anyone who wanted to come online, but do raise your hand otherwise. 
does every uh, sorry please share your email address where you send docs Srinivas yes of course info at uh, I'll put it on the chat also info at combinedco.com and you can generally whatsapp us right as one of the whatsapp and of course you know our uh, website which I'm going to put anyway I would encourage everyone to uh, just go to Testfit uh, University website and you will get all the answers of the queries, I feel so. And we try and get in touch with you as soon as possible. Yeah, so, you know, most of the inquiries, if they're generic, um, we can answer. If they're very specific, we can take it offline. But yes, do send us your details. Register, email us. Uh, I've just also put it on the website. Aznan, hundred how to get hundred percent scholarship? Again, I think it's related to uh, perhaps your other um, scholarship query, and um, hundred percent scholarship is uh, highly competitive. Aznan, again, depends on a variety of uh, aspects of your profile and the CSS that you submit based on your tax returns of your parents, your own profile, and the course that you're considering, whether you're applying to an IV or a private, some private universities may be more amenable to give you a 50, 60% scholarship, uh, whereas there are only you know, 10, 12 universities in the US which are need blind. If you're an outstanding candidate with a perfect score of 800 on the SAT, for example, or a 780, 790, that you would be able to be eligible to do that. So I encourage you to get in touch with us. Um, in the meantime, I will just at the background. Um, excuse me a second, I will just launch uh, a poll, which you can perhaps uh, do whilst we're going through the Q and A, and let me just go through the further question. And we've still got a fair amount to go through. Ashwarya inquiring uh, any universities focuses on merit and not on our profile. So academic merit is you know paramount. Um, Ashwarya, I'm not sure if I can find you. Yes, so if, if you wish, you can come online. Uh, you, you can unmute yourself. Any universities that mainly focus on merit and not so much on your profile. So academic merit, I would say, is more paramount than your profile, but your profile helps if you wish to stand out amongst your peers. Right, so yes, short answer. All universities focus on academic merit. Secondly, then on your profile. Um, if you wish, you can come online. Otherwise, I'll take that as answered live. Yes, thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. Are you looking for next year or this year? By the way, oh, sorry, next year or the following year? Next year. Next. Okay, fine. Just encourage you to send us your CV in your profile uh, or you know register. For an online session on the top of our website, there's a Calendly button. You can schedule an appointment and you can. Um... Okay, sir, sure. Yeah. Wonderful. So, um... River Mishra inquiring, how do we shortlist which university to apply for early admission? So again, that's a uh, that's a very good question, River. Um, and I think the issue there it would be a lot of criteria based on uh, your likelihood of admission to your aspirational or a match university. Uh, presumably you're looking at the US because you're talking about early admissions. So I would say, um, you know, mid-November being your ED to the US, you lose nothing, uh, but you restrict yourself of perhaps getting admission to your early decision choice and losing out on other regular decisions or early actions on your US admissions. So it's a important decision to make. Again, it depends on your profile and the kind of university that you want to apply to and what is your likelihood of admissions, which is why you know the best fit rankings may help you. Uh, and obviously you need to go through the early admissions criteria and see what is the kind of stats uh, based on last year from your school CMS, for example. So remember that, you know, as you are evaluating the university, the university is evaluating you and your school from which you're applying to. So if there's prior admissions data from your school, that will help. And if there's not in the last three to five years, then, you know, there'll be a bit, a bit of a gray box. If you wish, you can have a follow-up uh, uh, offline. Yeah, go ahead. 
thank you for your answer i had uh, another question regarding early yeah, sure. early sure. decisions only right so, so uh, can we only apply to one university for early decisions or right. uh, so typically it's, yeah, typically early decision is there's early decision which is restrictive uh, which is typically only for the one university See, there are a few EDs which are non-restrictive, but depends on the kind of university that you apply to. Harvard, for example, would be an ED. Stanford would be an ED. You can only apply to one. You can oh, do restrictive okay. early admission, which is the REA. You can do that. Uh, but your ED is restricted to only one. So if your dream university is Stanford, out of, say, 15 universities, um, if you get into Stanford, great. Uh, you, you may not get into Harvard. But that's the choice you have to make. Uh, and if you don't get into Stanford, then you lose out the opportunity to apply at a later admission cycle to Stanford. Let's put it that way. So it's a bit of, you know, it's a highly specific to you as a profile, which is why it's best fit. Your profile will be different from your, you know, your friend's profile, uh, for example. So it depends on how you fit based on the match to the college. So that is why it's a kind of a strategic game that uh, you need to be aware of because they universities will also want you to apply ED so that they want you to come to that university. They, they don't want you to shop around, right? Because they know that you're going to apply to 10, 12 universities, shop around, you know, getting into the shopping cart and then you decide. Universities want you. So it's a bit of a, a, a push and a pull, you know, between the two. Don't well, quote me, but most universities, <laughs> based on experience, uh, evaluate you accordingly. If you're an outstanding candidate, they want you more than others. Uh, I would say if you're if you're a candidate which is in the top 10%, 20% in the class, they may not give you an ED accordingly. You may be better off waiting and applying for a early action or a, a regular decision in your case. Depends on your profile and your target university. Okay, sir. Thank you. So encourage you again to send us your docs and we can take it forward. Thank you. Okay, at the um, Jay, how can I get? How can I choose music along with computer science and which colleges? Wow, great question, Jay. If you're there, um, so typically uh, CS is not a natural choice with music, uh, but certainly uh, you you can do music composition uh, as a minor, perhaps uh, with some CS programs. So when I when I when I presume when you say music, you would be saying an as an instrument or a classical, as opposed to a digital, for example. So digital music or digital composition, uh, and remixing and and audio UI UX related stuff would be a natural combination with CS. Uh, again, the kind of colleges uh, you can use our website, but there's a large number of options both in the UK and US. You wish you can come online, Jay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm just moving on. I'm taking uh, questions live. Okay. I have my colleagues also, uh, uh, Lela and. Uh, Bhavna, in case they wish to jump in at any point in time. Pratyush Sina, I'm interested in pursuing forensic science. I got to know that a bachelor's in forensic may not be a very good choice. You prefer not to hire those belonging to a pure forensic science background in order to pursue my master's. What would be better? So, um, as a bachelor's in forensic science, uh, I'm not sure where you're getting your information from. So, uh, you can either do a bachelor's or an integrated master's, uh, Pratyush. If you, if I can find you, you can come online. You, it's typically your choice, but typically a master's in forensic science uh, would be a good bet. You can do a BSc biotech or a BSc zoology also, but I would choose a, a subject which is related to your chosen study. So you could do. There would be universities in the US and the UK, for example, where you can do a bachelor's in forensic science. And maybe even some with work placement, so a four-year degree with a one-year internship in industry, which will enhance your, you know, your work prospects of working in industry. And most universities or countries will give you two years stay back. So perhaps we should 
take the discussion further offline to evaluate your option based on what is it specifically. Um, Bioscience would be a good choice in the undergrad for following up with a forensic in masters. Okay. So, so Patish, yeah, I think uh, that's, okay, a, great, you, that's a great choice. And uh, of course, if you're looking for next year, get in touch with us earlier. Thank you. Yes, sure. an answer live. So I'm a little wary of the time, but uh, let's uh, go through them. Okay, how do I get into NUS or NTU? Jaya Gaur. So, um, yes, so both NUS and NTU, as you know, are equivalent to the IVs. They would need you to do the SAT or the ACT. And they, you're right, they would consider AP scores too. Uh, not again, university officially will never say it's mandatory. It's always test optional, which is a great way because they want more applications. They want to see more candidates coming and applying. And they will pick and choose the right candidates based on the availability of the seats. Most deadlines are in mid-March. You need to do the SAT and the ACTs. It's equivalent of applying to the um, IVs or the Russell Leagues in the UK. As you know, NUS uh, and NTU have tie-ups with uh, Yale uh, and Imperial College uh, in this Singapore campus. So I'll take that answer live. Do send us your documents, by the way. It's in the chat. Tejas Sharma, Culinary Arts Hotel Management. Okay, so great choices. Uh, both options are available. I'm just going to see if I can find you. Um, okay, so uh, typically you can do either or both. Uh, when most cases, either so hotel management, you would probably cover some aspects of culinary arts, uh, but a bachelor's in hotel management would teach you more specific uh, hotel management related subjects. Whereas a culinary arts studying at the Institute of um, Marangani, for example, or, or one of the French schools or the Swedish schools would be teaching you more specific culinary art skills in baking and, and various other culinary art skills. So take that as answered. Uh, can I apply to IVs that IELTS TOEFL? Yes, so it's always test optional based on the board that uh, you have done and the medium instruction in case the universities do consider it. Again, it depends on uh, your specific profile, Tanvi, if you wish. You can come online and unmute yourself. Um, most of the universities uh, waive, depending if you have a 90 or a 95%, uh, they would uh, waive your English or a TOEFL score. If you're going to Canada or an island, it's mandatory, by the way. So you would need to keep that in mind. UK, and sometimes US would be able to waive your requirement. Profile building, Joanna, how do you suggest us to go on with it in grade 11 itself? So grade 11 is actually already a little late. Uh, most students start in grade 10, if not grade 9, Joanna. So uh, it's not a problem at all. Uh, earlier, the better. And um, I would say grade 11 is the latest you should start because grade 12 come March, April, before summer, all you're doing is drafting essays and doing applications. It'll take you three to six months just doing applying to 10, 15 colleges. So yes, do contact us. Um, I'll put again my email and details, uh, if you can send us your details. And take that as answered live. If you wish, you can come online. And uh, profile building would involve uh, you to have a, I would say, a profile which is holistic, uh, somewhat skewed towards your target area of study. So when I say skewed, so if you're looking for a CS or a DS or a business management or a law program or something where you declared your major, for example, you would need to show some internships, some projects, something which is relevant in order to not just uh, uh, from the deans of admissions, don't just tell me how good you are, show me how good you are, right? So show me through internships, show me through work experiences. Maybe one or two articles you published. Um, how good you are. Don't just tell me I got 98%, right? Because everyone does. They, they would be all be similar in a in in a in in a equally weighted basket of applications. You'll be evaluated based on your profile. Uh, applying to German universities is the same as UK and US. So Yashraj, uh, there's both uh, private and public uh, 
universities available in, in Germany. I presume you're looking at the public ones uh, because those are highly competitive, especially the DTUs. And um, they are not requiring you to do the standardized tests, but certainly test of English. But yes, you need to be having a 90% plus for the DTUs and similar, especially in the engineering um, kind of subjects. If you wish, you can come online. Um, some universities, uh, they are like BSBI and JISMA, where you're taught in German, uh, sorry, taught in English, and you can study German and get B2 certification in German and be able to work in the German market also. So I'll just take that as answer. If you wish, you can come on live. Anything? Okay, so we are minus any is early decision, restrictive action, really advantage for an Ivy League, how to decide which is. So yeah, so those are great choices, uh, great questions. Minus again, um, I, I would say the important thing is each student's profile is different and each recommended aspirational match university, you would have to check, maybe use a mat, best fit match score, get some ideas, shortlist from 20, 30, shortlist them down to 10 or 12 and see which is the ranks you're getting, which are the best fit ranks you're getting. Uh, and then decide, send us your um, the profile. If you wish you can come online, but ED or restrictive early action is advantage just for an IV. If that is your, I would say your preferred one, number one or second choice because it restricts you from applying to any other university if you don't or if you do get admission let's put it that way if you don't get admission you can apply to others but if you do then you you lost your all other choices so it's great uh, if you're an outstanding candidate or you uh, or i would say a good best fit match for it if you're not you could give you can give it a shot if you wish to you know take you know take a punt at it um you don't lose anything um but you would still have an option to apply uh, regular decision. How to decide which APs? Yes, again, I would say it's highly subjective based on the target major that you want to apply for. So you have a science or a business management. I would I would do the physics. You know, the sir, I am sir, I'm from business. Sir, I want to do a okay. course in business management or in okay. economics. Yeah, so I would do the APs. Again, the APs, as you know, are, are, are credit bearing, but it helps your profile. So I, I, I would say your emphasis should be on your academics. Firstly, secondly, academics. Thirdly, your profile. And your profile is your APs, your work internships, your projects that you've done, um, and all of that matters. But your first would, would be your academics. That means your ninth, 10th, 11th, you predicted 12, what SAT or ECTs you've got. Um, that would be your paramount uh, aspect. Your APs, you should choose between three to five, I would say is the minimum. And maybe do five to seven max. I don't know which uh, grade you're in, but uh, Manas, but uh, can you, if you're in grade 11, then you have time. If you're if you grade 10, you have more time. Grade 11, you have less time. Uh, and you, yes, sir, I'm uh, in grade 11. Okay, so then you'll be going into, you already... Um, you're already in August. So you're going two years from now, right? 25 then. Yes, sir. Okay, then you have time. Perhaps you should get in touch with us and we can, you know, look at your profile and we do a lot of profile evaluation and profile building accordingly. And I'll uh, give you... Uh, yes, sir, for sure. Okay, wonderful. So great question, by the way, from City Montessori School. <laughs> wonderful. Um... 100% scholarship studying in South Korea. So the government of South Korea has a lot of scholarships. So, so does you know the Japanese government. You'll have to uh, go to the relevant foundations and inquire. Again, highly competitive. Um, do get in touch with us. 100% scholarship. Uh, if, if that is offered by the particular university, you would be eligible. Otherwise, uh, certainly you can apply it for student school loans and some part partial financial aid. So I'll just put it down. Please email us your CV. So that you can also can apply for some government scholarships. There are a good amount of scholarship, around 10 lakhs or so. So university scholarship plus government scholarships. Yes, yes, Jatha. So that's a great choice too. You can look at UK and Ireland also where you can get scholarships. Uh, yes, they 
to Giovanni, how can I choose the majors and minors? In the website of the colleges, I'm only able to see the name of the courses, engineering, applied, EE, etc. But how can I mix my subjects? Right. So I presume you're looking at uh, the US based on your question. So if, again, you don't have to declare your major, but if you wish to, um, as you don't, as you know, you don't have to choose your major till the second year, second, fourth semester of your study. So the first year is common. So as long as you get into you, your college, for example, if you're getting the College of Engineering, you don't have to choose whether you want to do CS, DS, uh, Mechanical, Aerospace, or Electrical Engineering. You only decide that based on your GPs that, that you get, and then you apply it to be transferred as a major to that. So you don't have to declare it upfront. But you apply to the college, the College of Engineering. College of Engineering, depending upon whichever university you're applying to, would offer you mechanical, electrical, aerospace, uh, computer science and engineering, electrical engineering, et cetera, et cetera. Some may have a higher GPA requirement if you want to have a major in, for example, computer science engineering, as opposed to, say, applied sciences, which you mentioned. How can I mix my subjects? At this stage, I would say just apply. Uh, we can we can help you, you know, build a profile which where you can apply. Important is to get into your college. So what students, for example, do um, is 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 apply for a applying to the relevant college, but not the major which is the hardest to get into. For example, computer science engineering. They they would apply to you know applied sciences as as, as you said. But get into it's like having a foot in the door. You, you have a foot in the door, you get into the college, and then you decide in your second year, right? So it's a bit of a strategic game, um, if that's the right way to put it. Everyone does it, so I think the important thing is for you to get into the college. Ayush, Yadav, how do I know universities which offer 100% scholarships? 100% so scholarships uh, would be... Um, Highly competitive. I know certain UK universities offer VC scholarships of say fifty percent to even hundred percent. No more than a handful, you know, depending on the university. Uh, do get in touch. Use our website, our resources, our financial aid uh, blogs, um, and by all means go through that. Um, do send us your profile. Okay, on to the last few questions. Okay, Shivangi, let's see if you guys are still here. Shivangi inquiring which APs should I take in order to pursue architecture? It partially depends, Shivangi, if you wish, you can come online depending upon um, what subjects you've taken in 11th and 12th. Uh, these are architecture, obviously, is a quant oriented subject with some aspect of the creative side. So, certainly, some aspects of uh, uh, maths, physics, uh, maybe taking, uh, uh, you know, those kind of APs and maybe an, an English or some other choice of maybe three to five, maximum seven, uh, which you should consider. It'll be highly specific to your profile and the college that you're inquiring to. So we know with over 600 colleges uh, in the US, 150 in the UK, uh, similarly depends on um which ones you're applying to. Some would be a little more flexible, some less, depending on your profile. So I would encourage you to send us your profile and we can take it further. Okay, sir. Thank you. And if you have any follow-up, since you're online, you can by all means inquire right away. Otherwise, you can get in touch with us. Okay, Srinivas, follow-up question. Gap here, good for profile building. Um, it's great if you're already doing something, uh, Srinivas. Um, if you're not, you need to justify what you've done. People don't like gaps. But, uh, example, if you're, you know, you've got a great research project, for example, and you want to, you know, perhaps major in that particular area or you're a state national player and you're doing great basketball um, or anything related which shows uh, leadership, skills yes it helps as long as you justify it um, i don't think students should take a gap year if then unable to say if it's not relevant to the target major or the kind of university that you're applying to meaning giving more ap's sorry work in terms of projects yeah projects for discovery would help 
um, again, um, as you rightly said, if you've not taken the APs, for example, not got work internships in grade 11 and 12, it perhaps would help be helpful if you're applying for certain colleges which are not within your reach. So again, if it's a it's a four star as opposed to a five stars match, then I would say perhaps it makes sense. You've got to be a little careful, by the way, so that you can do it meaningfully. Okay, we're down to a last few applications. Uh, Yash inquiring U.S. universities, depending upon whichever ones you're applying to, Melbourne, Sydney, UTS, etc. Similar deadlines, similar admission requirements. Uh, GT requirements would be a little more specific, so they would not want uh, to see much backlogs. For example, uh, they want they would want to see TOEFL and IELTS. Um, no retakes, um, and from a GT requirement, they would want to see certain ITRs for the last one or two years and financial statements. So a little more restrictive for the admissions, but we'll be glad to help you based on which target institutions you're looking at. Australia is a great choice um, for studies. Shivangi, Japan, a great university, sorry, Japan, a great country for bachelors in architecture. Um, so it, it's a good question. It really depends on which university you're getting into. And perhaps if you have a need for financial aid and the ability to, I don't know, whether you speak Japanese, um, that I find can be a restrictive choice uh, going to a non-English speaking country. And and if you're not, then I, I think you need to be a little you know, clear on that. I would encourage you to have uh, an offline session. If you wish, Shivangi, you can come online as you can unmute yourself if you like. Right, so um, we have last few questions down with Anshika uh, in asking, uh, can someone who has scored well in 10th or 11th be applying for scholarships, scored 74 in 10th? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, um, you know, the, I think the issue is uh, perhaps, Anshika, what is the amount of scholarship you're looking for? Um, it really depends on your profile. Um, anyway, anyone else wants to answer that, but um, it's typically uh, as long as you show academic progression, right? So you got a seventy-four in tenth. Uh, I'm not sure what you got in eleventh, and what your predicted grades of your midterms will be in twelfth. So as long as you show an upward trajectory, most universities will give you between two lakhs to five lakhs, you know, scholarships uh, on a competitive basis. Uh, anything more than that uh, would require you to um, have a equally good academic progression requirement. I must add on here that uh, there'll be a option where you can write your scholarship statement. So in your scholarship statement, you can specify what good things you can mention about you, what all you have achieved, not only marks, but anything about your uh, profile. So this may help to get some part of scholarship. You may get a partial scholarship from different universities, so you can try. No, absolutely, Anshika. I think get in touch with us. I think important thing is you're thinking about it. I don't know which grade you're in, but uh, get in touch with us sooner rather than later. Uh, last few questions after first year: Can subjects be changed? Manjuli Agarwal. I'm not sure specifically. I think based on your question, I think it's lar largely targeted towards the US. But yes, um, follow follow on to your earlier. Uh, colleague's question, as long as you're applying to the college, for example, in the, the case in point, whether it's engineering and applied sciences, you can change your subject. If you want to transfer, for example, to a different college, like business, for example, or psychology, then it would be based on your GPA requirements. So that would require, you know, the, the, the approval from the specific dean of that particular college, but very easily done. US has, you know, the widest range of flexibility, uh, which you, which you can imagine, but as long as you get the GPA requirements, right? Um, UK and Ireland uh, and Canada, uh, for that matter, would be a little more restrictive. So in UK and Ireland, you if you're doing a bachelor's in, I'm not sure what is your area of study, but say law or psychology, you can't switch to business unless you do it in the first month. And even then, it would be fairly restrictive. So I hope that answers your question.
Ishita inquiring GKS scholarship. Um, I'm not sure what GKS stands for, but uh, are you referring to the great scholarship? Um, perhaps Ishita, if you wish to come online or put it in the chat. So the, so the great scholarships in the UK are, as I mentioned, administered between the British Council and the university. Anything between five thousand pound, which is five lakhs to ten lakhs, um, which you can be considered. Most application deadlines are between March and April of the same year of admission for study. So, if you're applying for next year, most will open by October. Applications will start closing by I would say March to April. Uh, otherwise, there are a lot of other scholarships in lakhs, shivling. Um, I think she's talking about uh, Korea, studying okay, Korea scholarship okay, for free. GKS scholarship is okay, in Korea. Okay. Fine. So I would encourage you to send us your profile and we can take it offline. So there's so many scholarships out there. Off, off, offline would be a better way to take that forward. So I'll encourage you to send your CV to us and we we'll take it further. Fine. I think that brings us to a fairly long interactive session and uh, there's no further questions. Um, we still have a lot of people online. Um, I guess, um, hope you found this uh, session informative and I thank again, uh, Ms. Chandra Kuntra and Geetha Kingdom, your president. We have a few career counselors also on board. We have, uh, in case there's any further question, um, from Mahanagar campus or anyone else. Uh, we have uh, Ms. Maruti Mani also from Mahanagar campus. Um, so I would just encourage everyone, I'll just put in the chat, do uh, get in touch with us for your requirements, whether it's for next year or the next two to three years of admissions. I'll put down our website, which hopefully you remember. Uh, but uh, and our WhatsApp number and our email in the chat. And uh, we probably have a follow-up session in the next two to three weeks, uh, based on Ms. Chanda's uh, recommendation for students who are perhaps not able to attend today. Um, if there's any final question, by all means, do raise your hands. Otherwise, I'll uh, sign off. And thank you, everyone, for your time and my colleagues who have attended this session. There are a lot of students who are online still who have not answered questions. So if you wish, we have a, one or two which have just raised their hands. Um, Okay, I think they've lowered the hands or is there anything further? Great. Okay, thank you, everyone. I think that con concludes us for a good 90-minute session. Hope you found that informative. Uh, do get in touch and all our details are in the chat. Thank you. Have a good evening.